You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Days of Our Lives fans. Happy 2024. If you're listening to this the day we publish it, it is New Year's Day, and we are taking a look back today at the best and worst storylines of 2023. I've got five that I've ID'd as the best, five that I've ID'd as the worst, and I know you guys may agree with some, you may disagree with some. That's okay. I love it. Share your comments. I'm excited to to see what you think about the ones that I picked out. I'm going to do a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, to get to the top best, the top worst as it goes. If you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. Now, let's dig in. We're going to start with the best storylines of 2023. And of course, everybody's got their personal preference, so definitely drop your comments on what you think. Number five, my number five best storyline for 2023 on days is Susan Banks' Resurrection. I kind of knew when she blew up that I didn't think she was really going to die because it's days of our lives. I mean, how many people actually really die unless they also die in real life? And even then, sometimes they still don't kill them off. So I love Susan Banks. You know, I love her saying Maine, Maine, Maine. And I'm so happy that Maine, Ava Vitale, didn't actually kill her. I enjoyed that Clyde Weston had a hand in kidnapping her from the crash site, sending her over to London with her psycho ex. That was a fun blast from the past. I was so excited to have Susan Banks back because that was one less heartache for EJ. I will say about Susan Banks' resurrection, she had that tingle about Nicole's baby, like she couldn't quite get a read on it. I was really, really hoping that Susan might touch Nicole's belly and say, Elvis, that's not your baby. But she didn't. So that's the only downside to her resurrection story. I also enjoyed they gave it the space it needed to take up and then put her back on the road to Memphis to be with her honey. So that's my number five best. My number four best is Philip and Chloe leaving town together. We saw so many firings and exits last year. It was hard to watch a lot of them. But this one... I really liked that they brought Philip back for Chloe's exit. I I enjoyed it. You know, um, they have that that long running, you know, high school sweetheart romance. And in terms of how exits went for actresses that got axed reportedly because of Albert Alar, you know, we'll see. I'm sure we won't ever know the whole truth of that, but with her having to leave, with Nadia Borland having to leave, I, I do like how they exited them. And I thought it was very sweet. I also like that they didn't jump immediately back into a relationship. They were both leaving town at the same time, but you could tell things were going to progress. I enjoyed her with Xander, but I didn't ever think that that had a good shelf life. So in terms of exits and all that, I did really enjoy Philip and Chloe. My third best storyline was Dick Van Dyke showing up as John Black's biological father. First of all, I love me some Dick Van Dyke. If you like to watch classic TV land kind of stuff, the Dick Van Dyke show is hilarious. He is great from Night at the Museum, just everything. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Gosh, I love Dick Van Dyke. Um, Mary Poppins, I just Dick Van Dyke's a legend. So when they said he was being cast, if you don't remember, Dick Van Dyke works out at the same gym as Drake Hogeston that plays John Black. And he goes, hey, does your soap have any parts for old guys? And they wrote him one and it was great. Dick Van Dyke, of course, was revealed to be John Black's actual biological father, Timothy Robichaux, who was betrayed by a fellow serviceman who stole his dog tags and left him for dead. And then he wound up as an amnesiac in the VA hospitals for like four decades after the Korean War. It was all very sweet. I loved how they brought in the whole rest of the family to meet him. And I really hope that they bring Dick Van Dyke back again. And we do know we're going to revisit some more of John Black's history in 2024. I, If you watch our Days of Our Lives early spoilers leak, then you'll have seen some of that. But I loved having Dick Van Dyke on. I thought it was great. Speaking of the past, my number two is Megan Hathaway's return. 
I always like having an evil Demara around. And one of the good things about her return was that she didn't linger too long. You know, she started on Beyond Salem chapter two, and that's when we found out she had Bo Brady in a in a tube. It looked kind of like one of those things at the bank that you put your deposit in and pfft, yeah. So she had Bo and then, you know, he didn't come out of the tube right. And then, you know, she wanted him to be hers. He ran off that whole thing. Um, I really enjoyed Megan Hathaway. I enjoyed her reveal as Dimitri von Leuschner's mom. And again, part of what I appreciated about this storyline was that they didn't let it linger. They did what they needed to do, and then they got her out of there. And of course, now Dimitri is gone. I'd like to have him back because I really liked him and Leo. They were one of my best couples of 2023, if you watched my other video on that. All right, my number one favorite storyline of 2023 is Xander Horton. Xander Horton. Xander Cook and Sarah Horton's renewed romance and them being parents together. I thought it was very sweet. You know, I wondered about it, especially when they started revealing Sarah's pregnancy. I kind of knew where it was going. I'm a big Zara shipper. And I think they've done a really good job with it being a slow burn with, you know, getting Sarah's lie out of the way, then getting Rex Brady out of the way. And then getting that custody battle out of the way. And this coming week, Xander is asking Sarah to move in with him. They're going to be kissing. They're going to be all back together again. And I am there for it. That was my favorite storyline of 2023. And I think it's going to be one of my top ones from 2024 as well. All right. <clears throat> now let's talk about the worst things that happen on Days of Our Lives in 2023. Number five. It's it's not really a plot. It's a situation that was accomplished in a lot of plots. And that was all the firings. We lost Belle Black. We lost Chloe Lane. We lost Sean Brady. We lost Talia Hunter. I didn't care too much about that one. We just had people leaving, leaving, leaving. Camilla Banus was gone. And then weirdly, we got Gwen Rizchek gone. And then Emily O'Brien switching over to play Teresa Donovan because they also axed Jen Lilly. Really, just all of that was affected so many storylines. So I didn't want to devote, you know, the whole list to the, the irritating firings, but the firings really bothered me. The one firing that didn't bother me in 2023 was Albert Alar getting canned after all the things the actor said about the toxic work environment and how women were targeted and some of the ugly things that were said you know, things like Judy Evans, just awful, awful stuff. So that's my number five. My number four worst plot, Bo and Hope's non-reunion. <clears throat> Days of Our Lives sold their return to us as a reunion. You know, this epic love story that was going to come back. And then what happened was that wasn't what it was at all. Not at all, not even in a little. Bo rejected her. He ran from her. He denied their affection. And he was actually about to shoot her, except that Sean Brady shot him. So, yeah, I thought it was just awful. And it would have been different if they had promoted it in a different way. But the promos and everything was like, Bo and Hope are back. No, Bo and Hope were not back. Bo was back and also Hope was back. But Bo and Hope, not back. Not back together. And now he's in a coma. She's sitting by his bed. Peter Ruckel is hoping that they will have them back on as a functional couple. I'm hoping that too. The number third worst plot on days in 2023 for me was Abe Carver's endless and pointless amnesia. I mean, I understand why they cracked him in the head. You know, that was for the whole storyline with Colin. And then I understand why they gave him amnesia so they could bring in Whitley King and do her thing. But at this juncture, it has been going on for months. It is no longer storyline driven. There is no longer a reason to have it. It is ridiculous. All they need to do is have Abe, I don't know, slip on a patch of ice in town square, hit his head, get his memories back. 
because they've let it drag so long, it is so annoying and it continues to be so annoying. It is my third worst storyline of 2023. And unfortunately, it's dragging into 2024 as well. Maybe it'll make the list again. Second worst storyline, Alex Kitiakis as Victor Kitiakis's secret son, only he is not. I hate what Teresa Donovan has done. And I know a lot of you guys don't like seeing Emily O'Brien in the role. I've kind of gotten used to it. I don't like the fact that she's got that one bad blonde wig. I think they need to go to Wigs or Us and get her a couple of spares. But Alex has always been a tool and he's been a mega tool since he has gotten the word that he's Victor Spawn. He is calling his dad, Justin, by his first name. That's the man who raised you. That's like if you were adopted by a loving family and then you meet your biological parent later and then you go back to the people that raised you, your mom and dad, and start calling them by their first names. It's horrible behavior. Alex is a waste of space and I cannot wait until he is gobsmacked and it comes out that Xander is really the secret son and Alex is dethroned, chucked to the side and gets a lesson in humility for right now. That's my number two worst plot. My number one worst plot, and I think probably a lot of you will agree with me on this, is the horrible and lingering Nicole Walker stolen baby storyline. Oh my gosh. You know, Nicole has had such a hard time with miscarriages. Then, you know, she was so scared about this pregnancy and then the car crash, she delivers on the side of the road, the baby's healthy. And then bam, that shady doctor Pierce, I think his name was, was like, oh, your baby's dead. And Sloan's got her baby. And then there was that other chance because Eric agreed to the DNA test. And of course, you know, it didn't work out because they tested EJ's DNA. For those of you who still think that baby might be EJ's, there have now been three DNA tests showing it is not EJ's baby. It is not EJ's baby. At any rate... Nicole's stolen baby is awful and she is now in therapy and she's admitting terrible things. So this storyline is going to continue into 2024. And if it takes up a lot of it, it's probably going to wind up on my worst plots in 2024 list. All right. That's all the worst that I wanted to share with you and the best as well. Definitely drop your comments below, whether you agree or disagree and tell me what your favorite storylines were and the ones you really hated on days of our lives in 2023. I love the conversation about the soap. This is Belinda from Soap Dirt. I'm here talking days, seven days a week. And if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe, drop those comments, come back soon. Thanks for listening. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 